With the fifth child, we had three crazy nannies. The first one was en route to the Cape Winelands. She used my job as a side gig, you know, just passing through to where she really wanted to go. Um, and she, in the interim though, she stole my underwear, guys. So I'm in, in uh, the room where she used to sleep because I had clothes in that cupboard. And I'm trying to sort, I'm looking, this was my favorite underwear. I'm looking for this underwear, can't find it. But here I am, her bag is down here and you've got the hooky thingy, you know, where you hang the clothes up. So I'm dealing with something and, and she had left her bag open. So the thing I'm trying to take off the hanger falls into the open bag. I pick it up and there underneath is my favorite underwear that I had been looking for. I thought to myself, you know what? I've seen enough crazy nonsense to know that I'm not touching that thing. I don't know what she's done with it. I don't know what this is supposed to be about, but I'm not gonna touch it. So instead, I step away, take what it is I wanted, acted like I didn't see, told my husband, lady is out of here. She's out of here. I don't know, underwear. Guys, this is, you see, you steal a, a dress, it's one matter. This is Africa. Someone steals underwear. You best believe things are deep. Because it was, no, I don't believe it was a lack of underwear, of her own underwear to wear. And I think, I think it was something deeper. So, um, I was just like, I don't want to, don't want her, I don't. And I think my poor husband was just like, why are you being superstitious? And um, he, he'd seen enough. We'd been through so many nannies, they're just going like that. And he was like, you need the help. Where are we going to start finding another one in this, you know, middle of nowhere? But in any case, she eventually um, left. And then she had the nerve when she had made it over. The, the, the border to ask that I call me and give me instructions as to what to do with her bag <laughs> that she left behind. Some mothers do have them. I had thrown the bag away by then, so I wasn't gonna get involved with that. Then I had one who was just a crazy old woman, you know, and she was violent. She, the, I think the last straw for me, she took, again, my number five. He was three at the time. She took him and she, you know, rage threw him on a bed um in his room threw him on the bed and shut the door on him a three-year-old left him alone crying behind a closed door basically telling him that when he behaves himself he can come up it's one thing to say you know time out go to the corner etc et i've never ever allowed any helper to hit my children it's just not allowed because you you will where will you know that to draw the line and the boundary between you know, little correction and abuse. You didn't carry them. You don't love them. You don't know the boundaries. You will let your anger out on these children. And you, you know, I mean, I know my children are well behaved, but I'm not in any denial to know that sometimes children can just get on your nerves. They can just say the wrong thing at, at a certain time, you know. So she flings this three-year-old onto her bed, uh, tells him to shut up, and slams the door and leaves him there. I wasn't around, I find the story out later. She didn't last. Um, but the same three-year-old, a time when he was five months old, there was another nanny who um, I had been to the office and came back in the middle of the day. And she obviously didn't know I had come into the house because she had put the TV on so loud. She took my child, she strapped him down in a car seat, not a pram, car seat, strapped him down, five months old. Put him in front of the TV, put the TV on the loudest blast, and then was in the bathroom just washing, you know, cleaning up and... And that was the reason why I always tried to have someone else assist, you know, who would come in maybe twice a week or whatever and help with the spring cleaning. <clears throat> when I want to clean up and I've got a baby, I put them in whatever seat and I put them next to me. And I'll be cleaning and be talking to the child and, you know. So this person just wanted a reprieve from my child. And this baby <clears throat> was in front of the TV screaming. Yo, guys, <clears throat> I think this was one of the first times I wept openly from, from the depths of my heart. Uh, she didn't last. But I mean, this poor child had just been traumatized. So I said three, I'm trying to remember the third one, I don't know if I exhausted them. Then we had one we used to call Beyonce. This chick came and, you know, at church one day, she just starts to scream and slither on the floor and manifest and go crazy and blah, 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 blah. And so we're thinking, oh, deliverance. She's, you know, being rid of whatever it is that she came with. We're in the house one day and we're all having um, prayer time. It's an evening, we're having prayer time. And my son begins to, sp to pray. And she again manifests and she's screaming. Then 
we're just like, okay, what have we brought into the house? Let me tell you this, guys. By the time she left, the day she left, she <laughs> she ran out. She physically, I come out in the morning, I see her, she looks at me like she'd seen a ghost. And then she uses the same excuse. She's running out to the lines. You know, in a house my side, with my number of children, there's always clothes on the washing line. She suddenly, she has to go get clothes after. I'm like, oh, okay. I go sit down. She goes, she gets the clothes. We never see her again. She left without her salary. This was a girl who came in looking. I mean, she had, according to her story, crawled through mud and rivers up to here and climbed over bark fences and blah, blah, blah to cut it into South Africa. And again, I had sympathy. And we were just like, okay, how do we get you legal? How do we sort out your paperwork? This was my heart towards her. Then all of a sudden, she goes on her off day, she comes back and this was no longer, you could just tell you'd been taken for some kind of right. This person was out there jolling, guys. She had weaves, big, long, you know, I, I can't describe it to you. She had just, there was a different lifestyle, you know, between outside and inside. Anyway, she ran away. Whatever it was that chased her, we just got to pray. I mean, the fire was too much. She left without her salary. She left. So that was that. And then we were just really cautious um, with uh, having any kind of help thereafter. Then we'd go through agencies. We eventually, I think the last one we um, had, very hardworking lady, um, but she was busy building her house. She was building her house back in Lesotho. And once it was built, all that was left was for the roofing and I had given her a salary. That was it, she was gonna go roof her house and leave and not come back. And so I've been through the mostest. I've been through the mostest eventually. And luckily, through all of this time, I was training my own children. Because something just seemed like, no, it just has to happen to you one, two, three, four, five times for you to know that this is not sustainable. And so I began, that, that's why I began to train my children. That's why I began to have um, doubles, have people relieving other people, um, sharing the duties. But it was really important that my children began to learn how to look after a house. And it was not an easy journey training them, eh? But I just thought to myself, now that I'm home and I don't go to work in the traditional sense, this is my opportunity and this is the season and this is probably one of the reasons that I'm home and able to put this into my children. So I would wake them up early in the morning and I would distribute the chores. Well, when they were still much younger, the chores were not distributed. I would go with them from room to room to room and teach them, this is how you scrub the floor. This is how you roll up tiny little plastic bags so that you don't have, you know, a big, the most intricate little things. I'll teach them, this is how you make a meal. You start with the onions, how, how you chop the onions, um, how you wash dishes, how you dry them, how you stack them away. I taught, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And you know, because we want to get up, do whatever needs to be done. As a woman, I put my hand to get something done and I can do it quick, quick, quick. But when you're going with children and they make an error and you need to correct and teach again, and you've got to have the patience. Today, for the most part, the patience pays off. These children are well-skilled and can do anything they put their hands to um, domestically. Excuse me, do they always do it? No. No, they don't, because laziness comes into play, familiarity comes into play, you're so familiar with the space, you're in a hurry to go get something else done, you're distracted. Um, while they're doing their chores, they turn it into a social club, they'll chill, have a long chat, talk, blah, 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 and then it's time for school, and oh, we haven't done, so then they quickly hide stuff around, people would sweep and hide the um, pack of dirt quickly under the couch, like, what does it take you just to put it in the dustpan and throw it away? And I want to get involved, um, I want to take over all the time, but it's like if I do, my mother didn't do that for me. I was an only child. I cleaned the whole house. I would cook all the meals, you know. Um, she had people who would come in and they would wash and they would iron. Um, and when they were not there, I washed my own clothes, however many they were. And, you know, girl children, we can go through quite a few clothes. I'd have my clothes washed. I would um, make every meal when I was home on holidays, I'd do dishes, I'd clean the house. And I'm that kind of person, you know that people who clean and they want to use a toothbrush to get into, use a knife to get into. So I'm like extremely, and, and that might have been part of the reason it was difficult for, for some people to work with me because 
you find that people just want to cheat. They want to do the least amount of work for the most amount of money. And I guess the truth, the same is true for employers who want to get the most amount of work um, for paying the least amount of money. I think it's just human nature. But the one thing that I sit with, um, with my conscience very clear, is the fact that I never cheated anyone's child. I never mistreated anyone's child. I always treated them decently. There was never any of that, you don't eat with the family, you don't eat the same thing, we eat here, go buy your own food. I didn't play that. I don't have time for that. What we're all eating, you eat, you're welcome to sit at the table with us and eat. Use the same plates, use the same forks, use the same knives. Um, your clothes are washed with my clothes in the washing machine. You use my toothpaste, you use my soap. I, these are human beings at the end of the day. And I think what then, every time that they would treat us bad and leave, we always just used to be like, are we doing something wrong by being nice, you know? Should we be, because I've seen people really horrible to their, to their domestic staff, basically wouldn't talk to them, treat them like dirt, don't put them on the same level. I cringe when I see people treat people like that. And yet they have them for 13, 14, 15 years, the same one. Do we just not value ourselves as human beings so much that the minute someone treats me with respect, either I, I don't know what it is, guys, if you can help me in the comment box, educate a sister, because I'm still trying to figure it out. But as I said, there's some who are just, um, able to do this work. They have the temperament, they have the mindset, um, they have the skill, they have the patience, they love children, <clears throat> they take great pride in, in making a place clean, <clears throat> and so it works. I've not uh, been unfortunate with some of the situations that a lot of people go through and I don't want to unpack them here, whether it is with children or with spouses, I think you get where I'm going with this. Um, God's been faithful. and. I just have that, at the end of the day, my conscience is clear. And now we, we do our thing by ourselves. I remember the one girl, the one who left my baby uh, screaming in, in, in the pram. I think the, the last straw for me, she slapped my son. So he was, she was washing with the washing machine, not by hand, washing machine. Then I think he touched the button by mistake and it put the cycle off or something. Yo, Please understand, we're a small family. When you see me and you see my children, everyone's a whole lot smaller than their average peer. We're tiny. This boy, how old is he at the time? Um, the last, the, the one who was the last born at the time was five months old. Today he is seven. So there's, there's a seven year gap, exactly. So my son was seven years old. And this woman, in her anger, gave him a slap. I wasn't there. I was told, he didn't even tell me. He told someone else, who then told me, because I think he did, I don't know what it, what it was, whether he thought I would flip or what I would do to, I don't know. When I found out she'd gone off, I packed her things. I was like, she needs to find out the door when she's coming. How that story ended is another, is another um, story. But I, when she eventually leaves, she leaves and then she sends me a friend request on Facebook um, and I'm just like I don't know guys like I screen my Facebook requests like I'll go to your page check you out like could we be friends in real life I'm not trying to just pack on um, numbers and, and feel like I'm popular you know I've got a page for that Facebook for me is like being in contact with people. We have to have the same values, etc., beliefs, so that we don't find ourselves now trolling each other on Facebook, talking rubbish. Like, if I don't agree with what you're saying, how in heaven's name did we become... And it's not to say we must always agree, but I mean, there's just a way that you disagree with friends and family, that you're like, you know, we're still cool. There's some people out there that are just plain old rude, and I'm not subjecting myself to that, so I'm very fussy. But, uh, so she asked me to be friends on Facebook, and I'm thinking, I don't know. That I could, but I'll go and I check out her page like I do with everyone else, and I find her posed on Facebook in my closet with my clothes on. People, can I say that again? She has pictures of my clothing on her body in my closet, you know, selfies and what, what, what. So I found that a bit difficult. And then there was pictures of her son, and her son was clothed in my children's clothes. Now with hers, yes, she'd taken the pictures, she put them back in the wardrobe. And I unknowingly had taken these and worn them. But with her boy, she had taken them away from my house. And she, there were brand new clothes I was going to give uh, over Christmas. Brand new suede boots and stuff. Um, 
it wasn't Christmas at the door. Obviously, it had to be winter or something. So I was just waiting for some child to grow into them. And when I go and look, jackets, beautiful, beautiful, gone. And then you you rob me blind, and then you come and ask me to be friends with you on Facebook. So then she start things start to go really bad for her back home, like bad. She was in a relationship, a fiance dumps her. She tried to get a job, she couldn't get any work. And she realized, you, I left a good situation. Then she calls one of our friends and says, you know, while I was there, I always just assumed that, ah, these ones are always praying, praying. In fact, I used to laugh at them behind their back, always praying, what is your prayer doing for you? And I just thought, it's only when I left that I discovered they must really, really be people of God. Because the way that I treated them, I know wasn't good. And I know that they were good to me. And I want to tell you, my life is a mess because of them. Do you think she cursed me? And this person who knows me was like, I don't think she's got time for that. No, she, you think like you're now the center and the focus of her life that she's busy issuing out curses. You got time for that? But she's like, yeah, but then how can everything be so wrong? And she's like, well, maybe God just fights for his own, you know? Why don't you call her? Why are you calling me? Like, how, how am I in the middle of this situation? Call her and apologize. So she did that. She called, she apologized. She's like, please forgive me. I didn't. I said, no, nah, I forgave you a long time ago for the sake of my own sanity. It's, it's over nothing to it and as soon as she had issued that apology she now writes me to say oh my goodness i know you serve a god oh uh, yeah i know you serve the real god I have my husband fiance whatever came back to me we're back on it he's brought lobola to my family oh i got a job everything is going well so you know i think god would do that every now and again just to give me that sense of calm that you're not going to fight for yourself in this situation i've not called you to be one of those one of those people who just treats people bad. And you end up looking like a fool. But remember I say that when you pray for your enemies, you heap coals upon their head. And I, the battle is not yours. I'll take care of it. And vengeance is mine. So I just leave all situations to him. But I've always trained my children. No child of mine is going to call a helper in this house by their first name. Like, what? Because my consciousness is, this is someone's mother. And if I had to do this job, I'd be your mother scrubbing someone's toilets. You know what I mean? I found that a lot of the nannies were intimidated by the independence of my children. There was the one, the one who went to put her roofing on her house. Yo, she could not cook to feed a dog. Like, yo, the... <laughs> my poor children <laughs> used to be like... Um, uh, just force their way through the food. And because I'm teaching them how to cook, they said every time she'd leave the room, they would just sneak into the kitchen. They knew what spices would just add a bit of a thing here or there. Then she'd come in and she'd say, get out, get out. It's me who cook or you. What you doing? Get out. And they struggled through her food. They just couldn't. I remember one time she said that she'd observed me cooking jollof rice. And I mean, she loved, she would eat. Cause on a Sunday now I cook up. So she's like, She's watching this thing and she wants to learn. So she went home and I asked her when she came back from one of her offices. I said, ah, did you try and feed your family any of the stuff you learned here? She said, yeah, I tried. Did they like it? No. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't think it's the recipe. I think it's your skill or the lack thereof. But I didn't want to, you know, dampen her spirits. At least she tried. Um, so she, I think was intimidated by the fact that these children were self-sufficient, could cook if they needed to, could bath themselves if they needed to, could, you know, and she would constantly be shooing them away. Leave, I'm the one doing it. No, don't clean, I'm the one, I'm the one. Um, and I would get angry with that because I'm like, I don't want people, I'd been so used to the nannies leaving all the time that I did not want to um, create that dependency. Because if that dependency was created, when they left, it all fell back on my shoulders. It was stuff I just could not and did not want to have to handle, you know. So, yeah, that's my story. Um, those are my stories. So, till today, we have no one in the house. Uh, we used to have a lady who would come. We had many ladies who would just come once uh, a week and spring clean and help to wash. Um, but, you know, when you get to a place where you're like, I didn't feel that. I didn't feel, I didn't feel that. I want you to make me need you. Do you get what I'm saying? I want you to create desperation. Like when things are in a frenzy, I want to be like, oh, where is Sister Kelly or whatever. Let's just give a name. Where's Jane? I want to feel for Jane. I want to call Jane and be like, God, I can't do without you. There's many people I know who said they have that situation. For me, it just wasn't. Because when they would go away on the weekends, in any case, 
I would get to scrubbing and my house would breathe like oh finally someone who actually loves me who's cleaned me not because it's a job you know that jobby job attitude now jobby job you can do with the house but when you move that to my children you've crossed the line I can't handle I can't handle so I'd rather just maintain by myself has it been easy oh hell no no it hasn't it hasn't and I think it's not necessarily been very easy on the children but they um, have developed skills that are enviable I think um, they're very self-sufficient very capable I'm very proud of them even though they cheat a lot they try and hide a lot of stuff sometimes they just get lazy but I know that if, if if well motivated and we do use a motivation system because if I was gonna pay a nanny then um, we don't have one then you know let's try and earn something or let's be motivated with whatever reward system we come up with and which we, sh we ch shake it up from time to time I've not been consistent this year this year has just been hectic but um, what we would normally do is that we break down the points earned we operate a point system and points are earned by virtue of your um, personal grooming so did you I've got boys right if you don't motivate they can get up not have a bath forget roll on maybe not brush their teeth just rock up to class and someone's standing here and I have to explain math I'm like Tofiakwa. so I found I had to actually motivate for personal hygiene so there's points for that like every single item Did you comb your hair um, have you greased your skin like down to the T and um, there's points for having done your chores so each chore is broken down per room and what needs to happen in each room and if each single thing has been marked off then you get four points if you did some of the things that you decide the points that you want to get you know what I mean then um, they get points for their personal behavior so did you demonstrate the fruits of the spirit were you kind to each other because you can get a job done and be nasty you know I always say and I always used to say when I was in corporate that I could train any monkey you know it's not so much that you come and you're highly skilled and you're capable that's the point the point is are you a team player are you kind and gracious to people um, how do you behave is your behavior congruent with your belief system because you can go on and on and say I read the Bible I am and then we come down to how you behave and it's not it's not adding up so I motivate they're at an age now where you're trying to teach something and it's reinforced by motivation sometimes reinforced by punishment that's reality however they're gonna get to an age where I can withdraw all of that and they will be able to check themselves maybe hear my voice at the back of their heads and know I shouldn't be doing that that's okay to do you know they can self-police so it scores for the work, the chores done, it's uh, for the personal hygiene, it's for the way they treat each other, and for having spent time in their personal devotions, you know, have you, were you at devotions, were you awake at devotions, because they get up very, very early, you know, um, and are you, can you remember scripture, and are you living it, basically, so all of these things get calculated get scored and get remunerated so to speak and what we used to do which we will resume again next next year by the grace of God once all is just better down is that we would then do a calculation and based on those earnings they would go out for a day out and decide how they want to spend their earnings at the end of of the month also I could just then deposit directly into their accounts and they're accumulating their investment so yeah that's what works for me and uh, I know there's many of us that just can't, can't not have a nanny or a domestic helper or because you just can't stand the filth. I think that this season of my life has made me extremely humble. I don't invite that many people over anymore because uh, they just know me a certain way. Remember I said that I, the first nanny we had, I'd say to her, when you're done with your job, take a step back and see if you can take a picture. And if you see any speck out of place, like, oh, this doesn't look nice on camera, then you've not finished your job. My home always looked like it came straight out of a magazine. You know, everything pristine, the smells. The, it was a full sensory... Um, what's the word in English? You figure it out. But all five senses had to be engaged. I was a homemaker, you know what I mean? Then I became a baby maker and you had to just balance like which was, can you hear someone drumming? You had to balance which was important, which was not. Sometimes I'll take over and they'll know, yo, mommy is, she's on it now. 
she's cleaning she's just stay out of my way stay out of my way i'm gonna clean my house the way i want my house clean and then other times i don't have the capacity i don't have the time i'm nursing a baby or i don't want to take that control away from the children so it balances out but i've been humbled in the sense that i would sometimes go to other people's houses and i'll just be like my nose all turned up like oh my goodness like it's a speck of dirt oh no there's a now how shem i'm like you know what let it be what it is and if you come to my house and something is not clean and you're so concerned guess what you come with next time a broom baby yeah see to finish if you see my children outside and they are not ironed and what 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 know that i have ensured that they're well educated they're well fed they're healthy they're loved they're well mannered and then we can take care about whether you know the socks match the shoes were polished and again if you're so concerned Please hop on over and assist where you think I'm falling short. But that's been story time about, I call it nanny diaries, about the nannies that were and the nannies that no longer are. And I do believe at some point we will go back to having help. Um, I'm just not there yet. We're not in that season. And um, I'm enjoying the time now, training my children, strengthening our bond and relationship and being present. So please comment down below let me know what your own stories and experiences have been or any advice that you have for me or maybe you're like some cleaning guru and uh you can point me to a video on how to really make things pop and shine till then love you much love you plenty god bless you bye